All right. Shalom, I'm Yasharala. I'm going to start off by giving infinite honors to our Heavenly Father and our great King. Yahweh, your double honors to our elder apostles, elder bishops, a great millstone, and salutation to our fellow laborers in the Mashiach. Yahweh, shall put his true cross before we end. Shalom to you, brother. All right. Shalom. Uh, in the time of prophecy has been fulfilled, and uh, that's what we're going to come out with prophecy, man. Um, like the brother was said before we got in, the econ economic system is crashing. Uh, another prophecy that has been fulfilled, the truth is going forth. Everybody knows their nationality. And the uh, two-thirds, they are wilding out worse than ever. I mean, inequity has, has reached its peak, all right? And it's going to reach another peak. It's going to peak again when Jacob's trouble is implemented. So uh, somebody give me uh, Matthew 24 and start at verse 12. I got you. This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And that's the time we're living in in, in this society. All right? Iniquity is abounding and you can't trust no one. All right? If you break down on the side of the road, you don't want no help. All right? Somebody's coming to Come on the side of the road and spoil you. All right. You uh go to your door, Amazon worker. You think it's Amazon coming to deliver a package, you open the door, they bum rushing in your house trying to uh spoil you, take your goods. Okay. And not only is iniquity abounded in that area, when you look at the econ e economy, iniqu iniquity is bombed. The reason the banks are collapsing is because these corporate bankers, the rulers of this world, the rulers in dark places. They're manipulating the money system so people can lose everything, all right? So they could uh, uh, put, like the brother Taz always say, he's a, uh, he sells houses for a living, and he said people can't buy houses because they are putting so much on property taxes, all right? All of that's by design, all right? That's iniquity and, uh, um, abounding. And what happens when men can't get their daily bread. What are men going to do? They're going to resort to animalistic behavior. These people are going to go to these banks and they're not going to be able to get their work, their nourishment, and what are they going to do? They're going to eventually uh, uprise. You're going to eventually have an insurrection in this place, civil unrest. And it's all by design. That's that's what this devil wants. So he could bring in uh, diabolical laws to govern the people. Bring it out, brother. You want me to read verse 13? Yeah. Con. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And, and these are telltale signs that we're in the end. All right? That's a telltale sign when, 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 when it, during the time of the Great Depression. All right? What happened? You had to, uh, what, what Jake was doing for money, playing the numbers game. All right? People are not going to play the numbers game this time. To uh, and have soup kitchens this time to uh, go through this great depression. People are going to come in the streets and blood is going to roll in the street. All right. People are going to do what the lions on the Serengeti do. They're going to try to overtake the weak. They're going to spoil each other's houses, according to prophecy, man. Okay. And while iniquity is abounding with the men of the Lord on the, on the other side of that spectrum, men are waxing strong in the spirit. All right. Brothers are enlightening their elect. All right, and brothers are getting prepared for all hell to break loose. All right, bring uh, read me the next verse, brother. God. Verse 14 And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. All right, the end is here. The gospel is preached from Australia to Antarctica, not Antarctica, to Alaska. All right, all throughout the West Indian Islands, all over there in Europe, the gospel has been preached. Iniquity is abounding. The gospel has been treat, preached. If you don't know you're at the end of time, at the end of an era, at the end of an age, you're not in reality. You're not occupied in prophecy. All right? This money system falling, these banks collapsing, is all by design. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong in these turbulent times. Give me uh, 2nd Ezra 7 and 43. I got a precept for you, too. All right, bring it out. Kind of just to back up what you just said, as the times get worse out here, Hey, the the true the true men of the Lord out there, and hey, they're waxing stronger in the spirits, and are, and are hastening for this collapse and this this tear and this destruction to come because we know that our salvation comes thereafter. This is yeah, wisdom. Yeah, I got a too. 
This is Wisdom of Solomon 5. I'm going to just read verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. All right. And that's that's end time prophecy, man. Righteous men in other eras than the 1930s, 1920s, 1911. All right. They went on the forefront prophesying against this devil. They would end up hanging, hanging from trees. All right. This is the time from 1969 on back when Elbert Vivens hit the uh, scene in 1969 and 68 until now. Righteous men have been on the block with straight with, with great boldness prophesying against this uh, great red dragon. All right. And giving it to people, whether they heal forbear, whether they like it or not, or whether they got to be found faithful unto death and get killed for the testimony of Hamashiach and Hawashiach. That's the end of time prophecy that has been fulfilled. You got more on that, brother? Oh no, that was it. You got one on uh, Elder? Yeah, that's the one uh, he was talking about just a couple of seconds ago. This is a uh, second editor 15 and 15. It says, For the sword and, and their destruction draw not, one people shall stand up to fight against another and swords in their hands, for there shall be sedition amongst men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor prince in the course of their actions to stand in their power. That's the part you, you brought out earlier. Right. When when men go to the bank where they put all of their their essence in, when you work, that's your essence. That's your riches to take care of your family. All right? When men go there and their everything they've labored by the sweat of their brow, their riches, what it takes for them to comfort their wife, comfort their children, put food on the table. That's not there. That's going to make people say, Fuck the kings and priests, the, the kings and the, uh, the princes of that nation, the infrastructure. That's going to make people come to the streets and not give a fuck. That's the only thing that, we, that will make a civilized man turn bloody. That's one of the few things that makes civilized men go haywire, all right? When they can't take care of their children, when they can't protect their children, their families, and when they feel they're being manipulated. You put your money there, you trust in this bank to, to uh hold your money so you can do business and commerce and you go there and they tell you ain't nothing. Hey, we lost it. Hey, we don't got it. All right? You have people in the society that's living from check to check. Everything that glitter ain't gold. And I'm not talking about on lower levels in the hood. You have so middle class people that got Benzes and, and, and BMWs in their um garage. Yard is manicured. House is nice. And they're living from check to check. Real talk. Everything that glitter ain't gold. So this is gonna this is gonna overstep uh class boundaries, man. And and notice when one bank falls, another gonna bank gonna fall because through the spirit has been hey, the elders of Great Millstone has taught us that it's just only one entity that's over all of these banks. The other ones are gonna fall too. And I seen Elder Tahar a couple years ago say he don't keep the bulk of his money in the bank. He keep enough money in the bank to do his uh, business and commerce. All right. If, it might, if nobody got a precept, give me that uh, second Ezra 7 and 43. Okay. This uh, second Ezra 7 and 43. It says, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time. All right. Now, when, when, a, man, <laughs> when a man go to the bank, and all everything he worked for gone, he's been robbed. Is that not a time of doom? And we we talking about hundreds of thousands of men. That's 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 gonna usher in some some doomish days, some hellish days, when it start happening on a consistent, uh, when when it happens on a consistent uh manner, because it's that's just the beginning. Bring it out. It says, and the beginning of the immortality for to come. Wherein corruption is past. All right. Cut all. In the end of in the end of corruption, all right, the end of this devil's uh society is is at an end when he tries to change the money system. Because he's crashing these banks to do what? Bring in that like or uh, the brother Darashi always say the centerpiece of prophecy to bring in that new currency. All right, which is the MOTB, the Karagi. Okay, and that's gonna be the end. And in and after that. Our temptation is done when the, the Lord tests the man to see when you have to just only trust on him. You're totally disconnected from the grid. All right. And you have found faith unto death. 
the kingdom of heaven and immortality awaits you. But that shows you through these scriptures we're at the end. We're at the end of the end. We always say we're in the last days. Nah, we passed the last days. We, we're in the last seconds. We're in the final hour. We're in the final fucking hour. Because, hey, when you know Esau's layout, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. He has to do this with the arm um, banks. This has to happen for him to bring in this new currency. That's Not what happened some. in the 1920s, in the 1930s. They went to the bank, their money was gone. Keep reading, brother. I got some. All right. Okay. It says, verse 44, intemperance is at an end. Infidelity is cut off. Righteousness is grown and truth is sprung up. All right. All the lies that has governed the earth, the earth has been covered in growth darkness. Now the Lord has sent out his prophets to be light bearers to the planet Earth, to spread forth this truth. So all of this, this devil lies about history, our nationality, who we are, all right? Is that an end for that, all right? Then when you look at these peons in the society, hey, they're not even believing the shit the government pushes on them no more. They're not taking that shit. You have a lot of them asking questions. That's why America is a nation divided. And our great king taught us a kingdom divided cannot stand. All right? So that's how you know this is a downward spiral. In the 30s, 20s, I say all the way up to the 50s. One thing these um, Americans had in, in common was that they hated uh, all of the Israelites. They still hate all the Israelites, but they you have a lot of other nations standing with the Black Lives Matter movement and stuff. You know, you have a, a lot of these devils was against that LGBTQ Q, U shit. Now they divided on that. All right. That's a telltale sign. This place is about to be destroyed. They're not united no more. They're not all together no more in different uh, subject matters. OK. And that's that's a good thing for us. All right. Bring it out, brother. Time. Verse 45, it says, Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that had gotten a victory. Yeah, now we're living in a time where the Lord is separating the men from the boys, the goats from the sheep, man. All right? The, the times that we're living in, uh, you have to be locked in with this truth. You have to uh, begin built on your most holy faith. All right? Or the Lord is going to let all of these calamities befall you, man. Like a man of the Lord, it hurts, all right? We still in the society. We still subject to payments. It hurts if you go to the bank and your money not there. A brother not putting all his faith in that, all right? His faith in your high by Shema Rashad. The Lord is still going to comfort that brother. He's still going to take care of that brother. But guess what? If you're not on your high by Shema Rashad's frequency and that keeps happening to you back to back to back, guess what happened? When he rolled out the, that fucking karagma, you gonna get that bitch, cause your faith went on your heavenly father and your great king. Your faith was in what you worked by the hands of your brow, and if you working by the hands of your brow for you to survive in America, you're gonna have to conform to these new agendas. All right, son. All right, bring it out, brother. Yeah, you spoke about the uh, the banks and how they gonna pretty much um they can you know. Uh, and institutional institutionalize everybody by 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 way of a karagma, like the brother said. All right, everybody gonna be on one vibration and one frequency. Because even during the Great Depression, it was an economic shock, which that was in 1929 or 39. But these are the three things that caused the Great Depression. It says the stock market crash of 1929, the collapse of world trade due to the smooth. The smooth Harley tariff, government policies, bank failures and panics, and the collapse of the money supply. Now, all these things are done in control of those that control the, the um, economy, which once you look at the debt clock, okay, they have led themselves in thick clay intentionally, man. All right, so they could what? They could cause the people to, they could shock the environment with a what? A, a economical crash, and then what? Tell the people, okay, here you go, man. You see, but, because a lot of our people labor to be rich. Real quick precept. This uh Proverbs 23 and 4. It says, labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. 
Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle towards heaven. You got to go out. Yeah. And if, you put your, if you put all your heart and your riches and, and the things you work, you work for, it, man, you, hey, you're going to lose it all anyway. Like the uh, brother told me one day, you're trying to climb, climb up the economic ladder that's collapsing. Uh, Second Peter, the third chapter, say the fashion of this word, this world is going to pass away. All right. So if you've got your heart set on what you accumulate in Babylon, man, you, you out of line with the spirit, man. All right. And the Lord is going to let uh, he's going to bring all these ju sore judgments down. Oh, somebody give me a revelation six and five. Got, got some for you, too. too. I got uh, you see Re Revelation six and five. Hey, can y'all hear me? Can I can hear you now. You see Revelation six and five. Yeah, Mike said Revelation six and five. I don't think yeah. Hey, what what you say that? Can you hear, hear me? Yeah, we, we can, can hear you now, bro. We can hear you. <clears throat> All right, I said Revelation chapter 6, verse 5. Okay. I got it. This is okay, uh, Revelation it. 6. Hey, but, but look, y'all, the volume just got low. I put it on Do, do Not Disturb. Can y'all hear me well? Okay. Oh, yeah, you're okay. straight. All right, somebody give me Revelation chapter 6, verse 5. Okay. Revelation 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. Hey, I, I'm going to have to come out and come back in because I can barely hear, bro. So like it. Just go, go ahead. I'll break it down. Um, I'm going to read it again. Uh, Revelation 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. Mm -hmm. And on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Right, which we ultimately know. Uh, uh, for both, give me Hosea, I think it's maybe seven and 12, or uh, 12 and seven, where it said the balances of deceit is in his hand. Yeah, <laughs> read it again, out, Bible uh, Revelation 6 and 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Right. Which is is, is known for for uh the uh oppression, man. All right. And they and this and this man is gonna do it, all right, by the way, which in the in the which the way he gonna do it. Matter of fact, read it, Cabal. As a uh, Hosea 12 verse 7. He is a merchant, the balance of the seat are in <laughs> are in his hand. Yep. He loved to oppress. There you go. Go ahead, you got it, Quad. All right, you you y'all had read the six and five, huh? <laughs> yeah, Con, I bought that out for it. Go ahead. Con, bring, yeah, that's the go. Bring it out, brother. I read again. You want verse six in that revelation? Hey, it should get verse six too. Yeah, no, read verse five first. We read five. We read five. Read it again. Read it again for him. Con. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. All right. And I already know the brother. If y'all read it, the brother told you that, told everybody that, that, that balance to go on the yokes. And when you read all of these horses, with the exception of the white horse, they, it's all about calamities coming to the planet Earth. All right. It's all about some type of atrocity coming. And when you understand this black horse, he's fucking up the money system, all right? It, this goes into the, the, the money system. Esau oppresses uh, the people of the earth through his, his money uh, system he's uh, came up with, with the IMF, the EU, uh, the, the uh, way they got these laws in the earth about buy, selling, and trade. Look what the money system did to Haiti. Haiti is the, one of the only few countries of Israelites that really won a war in these uh, modern times against Esau. And then how did Esau get them? They didn't let them trade. They let them, they didn't let them participate in the money system. All right. And they put yokes on them. Now look at them. Look at them. They over there eating mud cakes to survive, man. Okay. 
And that's what this devil is about to do with that karagma, man. He's about to put more yokes on the people through the money system. Keep reading, brother. Uh, verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and, yep. three, measures, and three measures of barley for a penny. See thou hurt not the oil and the wine. All right. Now, when it goes in that measure of wheat for a penny, all right, that's going in a hyperinflation. Because when you go into that word penny, it's the word denarius, all right? I got it. And when you, and when you go into that, you about to get it, brother? Yeah, I got it for you. All right, bring it up. Kind of that word penny, as the brother was saying, it goes into denarius. In the Strong's is G1220 denarion. And when you read in the outline of biblical usage, it says a Roman silver coin in, in New Testament times. It took its name from it being equal to 10 asses, which is another uh, currency usually made out of copper. A yeah. number after 217 BC increased to 16, about 3.898 grams or 0.1375 ounces. Now, here's the main point. It was the principal silver coin of the Roman Empire. From the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, it would seem that, the, that a denarius was then the ordinary pay for a day's wages. All right. And a day's wages for a man in these modern times, what, it'll go from, you know, if you're getting paid decently, handsomely, 100 to $300 a day for a middle class person, you know? All right. In the ancient world, a denarius for a Roman soldier, a Roman soldier had a decent life, all right? And he wouldn't take no day's pay and go get a, a, a measure of wheat or barley. All right, that's going in the hyper effect inflation where it says 10 asses equal one denarius. All right, to get that, that measure of wheat or that barley, it would probably in the ancient world take two or three asses to get a measure of wheat or barley, or less. So that's going into hyper inflation. This money system is going to hyper inflate. Whereas you could go to you could go to uh Walmart right now, a loaf of bread, what about two dollars, two dollars and some change. The day is going to come where it's going to go up to $20 and some change, $30 and some change. All right. All, that's what's going to happen before Esau just totally crushes uh, this, this, new, this money system so he can implement another money, another money system. Now, what does that do to the people of the earth? That puts them in a bind. That puts yokes on them. When you go to the hood and these dudes is robbing and killing, a lot of them is just doing it out of necessity. All right. A lot of these youngsters rob kill and steal out of necessity because they don't have resources at home now what happens when that happens to the so-called civil civilized man the so-called normal man guess what he gonna do he gonna be acting just like them niggas in the fucking hood because of the yokes and the oppression that then came down on his ass it's gonna get that bad this guy that's been working in the plant 20 fucking years getting paid 30 dollars an hour now overnight he don't have nothing all right, he's been living on that high horse. His bank, his his bank that he's been doing business with has gone bankrupt. All right. Now the job he's working at, they can't pay nobody. So the job has gone bankrupt. Now, what's the difference? What's the difference between him and a lead youngster in the hood or somebody in the hood that's living in despair or don't have much? Soon he's gonna have to do something to do what? Feed his family. He's gonna resort to the same thing these youngsters are resorting to. That's how that civil unrest is going to come, and that's how you know we're at the end of days, man. We're at the end of fucking days, that's how, and that's how the fashion of this life is passing away, all right, because this devil is implementing his new money system, all right, and it, it's, it's going to bring hell to this motherfucker, man. Hey, give me uh, Isaiah 19 and 2, brother. I got a preset for you, too. God showing that Isaiah is uh, Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 2. It says, And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against another, flocking. and they will fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. All right. When you go to a, a basketball game or a football game, and the Star Spangled Banner gets gets played, it don't matter what race you are, black, yellow, red, white, everybody stands up because everybody uh, 
has an allegiance to that flag. They are brothers. That should say American shall fight against American. All right? But when you fuck a man money up, <laughs> that's it. That That's something going to make him have his eye evil towards his brother. Okay? You have somebody, have a man's children starving to death. All right? That That's going to make a man look over there at his neighbor who's barbecuing and want to go spoil him. Because the love of many shall wax cold. He's not going to look at him as my neighbor anymore. All right? All of this is prophecies being fulfilled. Hey, hey, son. Yeah. Hey, go call your mama. She keep blowing my fucking phone up. God damn. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yeah. God. All right. Hey, give me the... uh. That, that the, the revelation on uh, 16. Somebody said precept. Con, I got one for you. God. Yeah, just do it. You want the revelation first? Or, I want, I, and, and somebody hold revelation 16 and 13. You want me to get mine first or you get the revelation first? Yeah, bring your precept out first. Right? Con, just the back of what you were saying. When when people's money gets messed up with, they can't they can't pay their bills or get or put food on the table for them or their children, you're going to see that animalistic nature come out. And as you were saying, they're going to be no different than these uh, these Israelites in the hood that they look down on as, as thugs and, and jack boys and all that, because they're going to be in the exact same position. Like they say, uh, that, that saying, necessity is the mother of invention. And when you, you, you're you in a, a, a situation of necessity, you're going to invent any way to get yourself out of a bad situation and a lot of times that's going to involve, you know, taking from other people, putting people to death. This is 2 Esther chapter 15, verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. And, and that's the times we're living in, man. All right. Uh, most people, they're uh, locked in with their bank. They're locked in with their credit cards. Once those things are shut down, all right, you can't go get your basic resources, your basic necessities. So uh, by all means necessary, the Lord put going to put a by all means necessary on the, on the spirit, spirit on all of humanity. Whether you're a mild-mannered man or, 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 or a vengeful man, that, but you got love for your neighbors, all right, when they can't get, get those basic necessities, they're going to spoil one another because guess what? They don't know what love is, all right? Love is keeping the commandments, and the commandments teach you how to love your brother, all right? To not uh, envy your brother, all right? Not steal from your brother, not lie to your brother. The world don't have that type of love, okay? The world has, the, the, their love has been taught by the precept of men, and, and it's called Mayweather love. As long as everything's going good, we love you. But what about when things go bad? Is that same love there? No. You're going to see, these Americans are going to see that nobody loves them, not even their parents, because mothers are going to kill children when they start starving to death, and they're going to eat them. You're going to have fathers that's been there with his family, and he's the stress is going to get so bad for him, he's going to abandon them. Okay? We live in this, and it's, those are beautiful times for the prophets. These things must happen so we can get salvation. Who got that Revelation 16 and 13? Yeah, I got a preset real fast. All right. This is uh, Baruch 2 and 2 and 2. It says, to bring unto us great plagues such as never happened in the, the whole heaven as it came to pass in Jerusalem according to the things that were written in the law of Moses. That a man should eat the flesh of his own son and the flesh of his own daughter. And that has happened through the archives of history amongst the nation of Israel. When the Assyrians came in on us, our people resorted to cannibalism. When the ancient Babylonians came in, came in on us and they besieged us in the city, the same thing happened. So what's going to happen when the Romans came in, the same thing happened. They besieged us. Uh, our people resorted to cannibalism. And it's just that it's going to be this time uh, in this last go-round when we're besieged by this great red dragon, 
our people are going to wild out worse than they ever wild out in all of those captivities because all of those captivities, this one, is all of them rolled up in one. All right? People are going to have barbecues in the middle of the street with their loved ones, man. Okay? And they're going to be doing it out of necessity because they're starving to death. All right? And that's the curse that was written or four time written in Matthew, meaning uh, in uh, Deuteronomy 28, chapter the 52nd verse, man. That we were going to be, be, get besieged in our cities and uh, resort to cannibalism. All right? When this devil uh, put in these curfews, because when you look at, uh, I think that was France. The people were uprising because of a curfew. When these people get these curfews and then, like, Esau really start bringing down calamities, you get caught out after death, you're going to get me out, out after curfew, you're going to get shot or you're going to get thrown in a dungeon, all right? And you besiege in your neighborhood. So you leave out your neighborhood, they're going to have checkpoints, all right? You're going to have military men at, at various checkpoints, all right? You're going to have military men at every exit to get on the interstate and off the interstate, all right? You could, it's easy for the Army Corps engineers to lock down a fucking city where nobody can move. And then they're going to have helicopters going overnight with the big-ass uh, lights and shit, and they're really going to have people locked in the house. Nobody's going to have food. People are going to be starving in them houses. And when, they, when you go, when that shit three, four weeks, it's not going to take long. People are going to start killing each other and eating each other, man. And I know that if, if you're not in the know and you hear some shit like that, that's far out. That won't happen in a first world country like America. The Lord is about to turn this bitch out to a third world country overnight. These first world privileges you have is, is, is about to be over with. And they're going to take all the water. You ain't going to be able to, they're going to want people to drink that fucking tap water, but they're going to put stuff in that tap water. They're doing it's it now. Point you can't do nothing. What you say, bro? Yeah. They they tainting the water now with the trains. What you think that's what you think that's about? They, mm -hmm. They're going on the, the main artery of America, which is the Mississippi River. So that water goes to very different states, man. Not just not just from Louisiana to to uh, Minnesota. It's happening now. You know, with the, all the derailments that's going on in East Palestine, East Palestine. I said East Palestine. Yeah, East Ohio. Palestine. Yeah. What you think that's about, man? This, dark, this double way of getting more control is about bring he, he bring in chaotic events so he could implement more diabolical laws so he could get a squeeze on the people. He has a God complex. He wants to be like the most high. For him to fulfill that enterprise, he has to try make people androids. He got to put that, that radio frequency identification technology in you. Revelation the 13th chapter, man, the Karagma in you. All of these things that we're hearing and read about, that's him trying to become the most high, all right, and lord over the peoples of the earth, all right? Because look, the most high is all knowing. He's uh, omnipresent. Once he get that, that, that frequency in you, all right, he gonna know where you're at 24 hours out the day. He's gonna have, his, he's gonna, he's gonna be able to hear what's going on in your house, all right, he's gonna be able to control if you live or die. You can just press a button and that that the motherfucking thing will make you explode or give you a dose of cyanide. He's really gonna think he's um the most high. But for him to get to that point where he has everybody ready to get it willingly, he's gotta put a squeeze on the people, fuck up your money, hyperinflate things, take away your resources, take away your your basic necessities, make all chaos happen in society so you don't even feel protected. 911 broke. So people spoiling each other. He not he's not coming to the rescue. He needs that to happen. Okay? Somebody give me that Revelation 16 and 13. And what's going to what's going to happen in society where with these gangs, these they purposely letting inmates out of prison. Yeah. They don't have to you average everyday people, you so called uh law abiding citizens, you're gonna beg for martial law. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna cry out for martial law to happen, man. All right? And it's, it's gonna happen that way. It's gonna go down. All right? Yeah, I was I was looking at this uh doomsday prepper and he was talking about 
people getting that uh thing up in them. All right. And he was like, he's gonna this is what he's gonna do. He said people are gonna come to Walmart to get it willingly. He said he's gonna what he's gonna do, he's gonna starve you out. He said he's gonna starve you out, put a choke chain on you with the water and the food, and he said people are gonna come to those uh to those uh Walmart facilities and, and beg to get the karagma so they can eat for just for daily bread. That's it. Not for money, not for gold, for silver, for water and bread. All right? And if you don't have the spirit of your high by Shema was shining on you, you're going to do it too. If you ever been hungry, hunger is a, being hungry, real pain, real hunger pain is a motherfucker. It, people, a lot of people in America, you look at the bombs under the bridges, man. Them dudes be fat. They go to these little places where they feed you um twice a day. Morning and in, in, in the afternoon here in America, like down here in downtown Baton Rouge on Florida Street, they got uh St. St. Vincent de Paul. All the poor people go there and they get fed twice a day. So even the bums here really don't know what real hunger is. We talking about Somalian hunger, where your, your stomach, you so hungry, your stomach get bloated. That's what's about to happen to these Americans. And when that happens, they go into them damn um, concentration camps and beg for the Quran. He had a quote from that devil, Henry Kissinger, where he said, if you want to control a nation, you control the oil. But if you want to control the people, you control the food. Control the food, right? And that's why yeah, all these things are happening about design. All these grain facilities getting burnt up. All these meat facilities getting burnt up. It's all by design. Right, and what, what happens with I want to say something too. What happens with uh with uh supply chains sometimes that disruption, all right, it's kind of like that, it's kind of like that movie uh brothers had uh, uh originally showed me. I think it's called uh the one with the elevator platform platform. And it's how that's how Esau is doing doing the employment of those different grain facilities. And with the animals, all right. If, if you're on the floor, if, if 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 it happened, if it happened on on a lower floor, on a lower level, you might not feel it way up there just yet because you eating, you feeling good. Yeah. As soon as you get, those disruptions are gonna come. It's gonna be like a, a, a ripple effect, man. All right. It haven't meet. It haven't met you now, but it's gonna meet. It's gonna meet a couple of months from now, a, a couple of days, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You talking about that movie act? Yeah, but that's how the Esau's doing everything in society, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And whatever floor, if you was on one of them, the higher floor you were, the less you got. Right? Right. Yeah, I saw that right. movie right? That, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Brother. When you when you when you burn up those those grain facilities and you kill off all the cows and chickens, and it's and it's making it's making the chicken prices high, it's like that, you might in in the, the bigger thing about it, you might not feel it real right now, but the real reason why that happened is going to happen. You're going to understand it months later from now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Con. Well, that's why that happened. And it's going to overtake overtake the whole nation. It, the day going to come when the only people that's going to uh, be well nourished is going to be the elites, and that's it. And the people in between, America is a nation in between, for them to get their nourishment, they're going to have to uh, become a cyborg. You're going to have to go get that uh, that technology put in. Or you're going to be one of the, those doomsday preppers type, and the Lord not going to be with you, all right? If the, if, if you're not serving your high by Shema Washa, all those things you stockpiling and store. first the government going to come at you anyway because the stock, they, they, they already passed the law, um, the legislation for people that stockpile and trying to save rain, rainwater. And if you say set um stocking up rainwater, you wasting your time. That shit full of the them chemtrails, man. You can't drink that shit, you know. But it, they pass legislation for those doomsday preppers that stockpile and resources and stuff. They're gonna deem you a terrorist. They're gonna say you're a terrorist. That's how do dialogue of the laws are gonna um uh, are gonna be around here. Cause you don't need the government for anything. And the Lord has got you stockpiling this stuff for his service, man. Because a lot of those right. people stockpiling those things, they live in the city, and they got somewhere out 
in the wilderness uh, what, they, what, what they call a bug out spot is. You ain't going to make it to those bug out spots. A man of the Lord going to bump into that stash. Straight up. All right, give me that revelation, brother. Uh, you said 16 and 13, right? Come. This revelation 16 and 13. It says, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Read verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of Yahweh Almighty. All right. Now, those, those three unclean spirits are these three uh, city-states. All right. You got Washington, D.C., which represents uh, the military. But I want to touch on London, all right, uh, over there in Europe. They control the money system. And what did it say? They are working miracles in, in the planet Earth, all right? Uh, the military, what one miracle they did was called fire down from heaven. All right, when you look at the, the city state, the Vatican, what did they do? They got all of these philosophies in the planet Earth. All right, got people believing all sorts of things. All that shit is birthed out of Catholicism. But the laws of London, that miracle they're gonna do, they're gonna, they're the ones that's gonna have the earth bump into one vibration. All right, they're gonna have the earth bump into one vibration, and that is money. All right, and that's why they have to, uh, De decapitate uh, all of these banks. People got these loans. All right, like people that how you gonna pay off your loan if all your money in your bank gone? You're gonna lose that house. You see, all that's by design, man. These corporate bankers, all right, they are the devil. They they are spirits working miracles and deceiving people and putting yokes on people. Okay, all of that shit is by design. That's why. <laughs> Hey, bro, that, hey, that is a real-life calamity if you're connected to the grid. You go to the bank and your money gone. You worked all week and your money is not there, all right? That's going to help him forward his enterprise. He needs the people to go crazy. He needs the people to, to turn into maniacs so he could bring, bring forth more legislation. That, that fucking seducing spirit right there, that's what it's doing. Okay? Because, cause, um, y'all can know, and I know you got, got all the intel on that. Those corporate bankers, all of those banks, it don't matter if it's, uh, what, what's the bank, what is in your wallet, Capital One, or, uh, uh, what's the other big one? Um, Chase, 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 Chase Region, whatever it is. When you Whitney. go up, when you go up the totem pole, there's only one family that owns all those banks, man. Hey, I just was looking at it. Um, and one of you brothers, like uh, uh Amawada Raya, put in put in Black Rock, put in Black Rock owns everything, or uh, Black Rock owns the world. All right. Black Rock, that's the Black Rock group, and then you got the other one. It's another one, it's the Black uh, Rock group. Stand it all. Oh, I forgot the other one. Stand it all right, the black. All those shareholders are Jews. All of the shareholders in Black in Black Rock are Jews. That's who who, who financed the, that 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 juice. That's who that's who rolls who controls these private prisons and everything. Okay, and they always put front men in front of them. Yep, the Black Rock group. You got it, brother. I wish you could put that on the big screen. And those yeah, are a either. bunch of Jewish shareholders, not one person owned. It's a bunch of uh, billionaire, trillionaire Jewish shareholders. They run the world through that. Yeah, Standard Oil, Standard Oil uh, definitely owns most of the majority of the companies, and in, in it's and in it's in it's owned by uh, John, John John Rockefeller, man. Yeah, John D. Rockefeller. Con. All, all, all those banks come up. America. And all of the oh, let me see something if I can find it. I'm about to say all companies connected to, to this one company. Well, go ahead. Uh, uh and BlackRock they they control the music industry too. Uh, all of the 
news outlets and everything like the brother show. So it's another one too. I right? it's two Vanguard. Huh? Vanguard. Vanguard. That's who it is, I right? Vanguard, the Vanguard group. That's it. That's who I was looking for. The Vanguard. It's the Black Rock and the Vanguard. They wanted the same though. All of them go up to them jewels. The Vanguard. That's who I was talking about, brother. You know, and they they control everything. So just because when if you're a smart man, if you got brains, all right, because men of the Lord, we have the spirit. But if you are if you're in this society and you don't believe in the scriptures, you still got simpletons with common sense. Some people with common sense. If you see one bank collapse and that happens to that bank, you and you're in the you should know that that's gonna eventually happen to your bank. You supposed to be getting your shit out right now. It's gonna happen to your bank. Everything happens with a domino effect, man. I didn't think it was about to happen so fast like that, though. We at the end. What's that? I, that one. That one looking kind of small. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get it bigger. It's just showing the percentages of what Vanguard and BlackRock own, and them combined. Yeah, so they own. BlackRock owns Apple, uh, Microsoft, and they own uh, Amazon, man. And they own all the banks, right, out. Right. And just right. like uh, most of the other companies are owned by Standard Oil. Standard Oil owns all of the different gas stations, Walmart, Sam's, all that shit connect back to them, man. All roads lead to the to the to the nineteen forty eighters, man. Yeah, and, and and we're not. Hey, so, hey, give me uh, give me that the second Corinthians two and eleven, because the Lord defends his. And somebody give me uh, Psalms ninety four. Let me make sure. I think it's twenty two. I got the Corinthians. Yeah. All right, give me Second Corinthians two and eleven, and, and somebody give me Psalms ninety four and twenty two. All right, because we we the Lord has have the servants bringing out this information for for men of the Lord to prepare themselves for these things, man. All right, because this devil will get to the point. The Lord say when he think he's full his enterprise, then he's gonna pour down uh, destruction on his ass. So with you knowing that, he's gonna make things happen in the kingdom of men. He's gonna what our Lord said, if he didn't bring Michael back, no flesh would be saved. So all of these things he's trying to do, he's going to get real far. He's going to succeed in, in a lot of these things. Uh, somebody bring that 2 Corinthians. This, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. All right. And his, devi his devices is to deceive the peoples of the earth all right to bring order out of chaos so he has to bring chaos to the planet earth for him to do what get more power man all right a service and the people that's listening to this truth and and you got ears to hear and eyes to see you got to be preparing yourself for these things you got to listen to uh the elder apostles of great millstone and their fruit so you don't be ignorant of his devices you don't look at these news channels and just believe it whatever you see come on the news channels all right, he that's that's the way he deceives the people of the earth, man. Okay, we're not ignorant of this, of this shit we're seeing, man. He's gonna bring forth a calamity, and when after he brings forth the calamity, guess what he's gonna bring out of that calamity? A resolution. He's gonna tell you, oh, well, we 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 got this, and this is gonna help fix this resolution. Like what he he bought in um uh that C19, you know what I'm saying. And then out of that, C-19, people are dying everywhere. The hospitals are full. And what came out of that? Uh, uh, a tranquilizer. To tranquilize everybody. So he bought the problem. It's, it's something that, it's the way you say it. When he bring the problem and then bring in a resolution. Problem, reaction, solution. That's it, right there. I love my brother. That's what it is. Say it again, Raya. God. It's called problem, which they create, 
the reaction which they get from the problem and then the solution which they bring from the problem they created to get that reaction. God. And you call that Satan's devices. And the Lord say, don't let him get advantage over you. If you fall for that shit, he will get advantage over you. And the next thing you know, you got his semen, his semen swimming in you, defiling your temple, killing you slowly. Or the next thing he then gave you, uh, 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 that put that technology in you, now you got a cancerous, grievous sore growing out of your body, man. Now you start mutating and shit from the radiation coming from that damn technology, man. Okay? So somebody got this Psalms 94 and 22? Real, real quick, I have hey, this they, Bring out your say something too. What they've been what they've been doing since dropping the C19 on you people. All they've been doing too is uh putting those putting that the meta well I can't say that the 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 the, the M the M M D all right system putting it on the putting it on the server to making everything one going back to the C19 in the in the in the Karagma. And also what they've been working on the technology which China has it now. China has everybody over there locked down in the grid, all right? With 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 a social with a social a social credit. And they've been working on with the cameras to identify you through your through your retina, your eyes, man. That's why they had you go out there to wear those those different uh things on your face. The poo the, the poo shiest the mask, all right, and the, and the, and the dog diapers, man. It's all a, it's a reason why they're doing this, all right. And you people put right in the place, all right. Now there's nothing going on. We're free again. We can go back outside. People, are stupid, man. He got hey, advantage. I, I want to say this though. Would you do you think those billionaires are doing it? Hell no. You think? Do you think when Warren Buffett wants to go into the building? Hey, you gotta put on, you gotta put on, you gotta put on your, your diaper. Hell no, man. They make one phone call, man. Give me, give me what I want, man. Coming up in there, With nothing. But meanwhile, you, you deadheads over here in the Americas, man. You follow, you, you believe anything the white coats say. You know, Go ahead, hey, huh? they got mad at you know what's his name got. Uh, Trump got a superiority complex. That happened with him. He went somewhere and was like he wasn't putting on the. Uh, Mask and then the media got on him. He won't wear a mask, and you know that lets you know he know the truth. He is like, I'm not putting that shit on. How yeah, the president snap, is not gonna wear he is? What does that tell all the people in the nation? But he know it's bullshit. You know that happened yeah, he, with him for real. Yeah, he came out of character. He forgot he was the president, man. Yeah, he, he had forgot. Con, not <laughs> con. Yeah, all right, give me that song of ninety four. Hey, bring out your precept, brother. I got one too after that songs. Come, me too. Come, this real quick. This uh, the word devices in Second Corinthians two and eleven is Noema, which says a mental perception and evil purpose. Plain. So Satan getting advantage of, of those that don't know to have the will of the Lord. It says we're not ignorant of his evil purpose, and it's it's obvious what his purpose is when you read the scriptures. The Lord gave us the skinny. You got it. Right. And, and his greatest home. device is uh not his sword, uh his brute strength is his uh manipulation. Well, what did the Lord say? He he was more cut, he was the most subtle than all the beasts of the field, is his cunningness, his craftiness, his smooth words. You know, Bill Gates got on fucking camera in front of the whole world and say we want to bring the population down. But you know, he talked like a geek, a geek. And he all weak and shit. But when you listen to his word, that words, they were diabolical. Yeah, we're gonna get this uh get this thing and we're gonna bring down Earth's population, you know. And he was sounding like a scientist and like he's harmless. But when you get a full scope of what he was saying, he was like, Man, we want the population down to 500 million, motherfucker. We want billions of people to die. But how did he sound? If how did he sound? He was like an angel of light. He was saying it like this: If if we do a really good job with the, uh, these drinks, then we can we can really get this this percentage of the P in the equation for pop uh, pop pop down. Yeah, and our people, I, when our people look at him, they look at him like like this is a, a cool guy. He know what he's talking about, and they're beguiled and deceived, man. Because in our people's psyche, a person 
has to have white porcelain skin to be the all out be all, whatever he says right. Oh, he's a scientist. You know? He's a scientist. He knows yeah, what he's yeah. talking about. He's the reason we have computers. <laughs> not, and it came out years ago. From... I'm about to say and it came out years ago that this guy didn't come up with the with the, the platform and the technology of, of Microsoft. That guy was put there as a figurehead to, to run a company. Now he's over now he's buying up acres, massive acres of land throughout the US, and he's over the he's over the 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 the, the, the system. The giving you the, the C nineteen, a guy that that guy that was dealing with computers for the last two decades, man. Come on, man. Now he's putting you. Yeah, so goddamn dumb. Now he's a general too, and he's a general. And older, he's a military, a brewer too. He putting them them special hops in that Heineken now. <laughs> yeah, a front man. At the end of the day, he's just a front man. You know, it's best. It's best now that the real, really, to deal with. If you're gonna, if you're gonna be a Jake that drink beer, it's best to deal with those small indie companies, some startup companies trying to get into into the brewery business. You get up in there and start drinking some of that Heineken, some of that 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 Rona, and all that shit, man. You're gonna have titties in no time, man. You're gonna you're gonna oh. have a C nineteen in no time, man. So it's best, it's best to get your drink on on a lower level, man. They they taint the hops with estrogen. They take the house with the C nineteen, the jump shot. That's what they're putting in there, man. Right now, uh, you know, you better get some shit that's you know imported exclusively, and pay and pay the, and pay the price one time, then to buy that shit, man. You know they hitting it hitting it home, man. They they already know you like you you nothing know, but a bunch of beer drinkers, which you don't know that all that all that shit do anything with uh. Bubbles like the uh the citric acid, that should tear up your stomach, man. Give you the big guts, give you titties, man. Yeah. And the said that that beer making you men moist, man. You niggas is niggas is screwed. Go ahead, brother. But you say I can better drink on some Jamaica with you to make your feet up. Huh? What'd you say? I say you better drink a Jamaican strip, huh? Something from some out yeah. from outside of America. Yeah, some shit from Europe or some shit, man. Drinking this shit that's here? Oh, it's, 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 it's over with, man. It's over with, man. Hey, Yakana. What's up? Hey, Yakana. It's making, it's making men take pictures where they lay on their stomach with their feet up. Yeah, man. God, nigga, I'm going to show you something. God, I was going to put it in the woods. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Corona, you know this guy Snoop, Snoop Dogg is a fucking... Uh, Spoke person now. That pup, he a puppet. Yeah, <laughs> a straight up puppet. Yeah, got two niggas doing this, man. All from right. drinking beer. Got two niggas doing this right here, man. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> got y'all niggas doing here. This is. <laughs> oh man. Hey, picking you oh up. shit. Niggas is true out here, man. America, hey, you, you, hey, you we laughing, we're laughing, but look, that's his agenda. That's his. We're not ignorant of things, devices. That's his agenda to emasculate the Israelite man. That's what's going on. Talking about some toxic masculinity, so they don't want men to be men. That, that's what they're pushing. They put estrogen in shit. They they change. They're trying in in these schools, uh, telling uh. Uh, I went to school. My son had a, a fight, and the, the dude went from one side of the class to the other side. You know, I don't, we, we don't teach our children to fight a bit, behave not Neanderthals. But the, the, when the teacher told me what happened at the fight, I was like, oh, no, you tripping. My son not in trouble. The, the dude got into it with him and walked from his side of the room to my son and hit my son while my son was sitting in the desk. And the lady told me what my son was supposed to do and this is what they teach the, the kids to do. If somebody hits you, you just ball up and let them hit you and tell the teacher. Nah, you, that, that's emasculation. Ain't no man <laughs> raising his son to do no shit like that, man. You know? And that, that's their agenda. To, to emasculate our sons and, and make them uh, metrosexuals. Yeah, hey, go right there. That's just a little bit of it. Damn. You 
All right. And then you couple that, you couple that. All right. Now they putting a the potion in you. All right. They putting the estrogen in, in great doses in you. Plus, you're raised by a woman and she's taught you her philosophies and you got her tempo. Hey. You got a real they're life man, John. They're just, just black scientists. Um, his name escaped me right now. I know his name. Um, they they threatened him and his family and them on killing them because he was getting ready to come out and say how the, the uh you know the government had him putting some some doses of whatever kind of kind of chemicals in the water in the, in, in in different projects in the hoods throughout America making making Jake turn like this man you know and they did their researches with with different frogs and, and animals making them making them turn like that you know God. you know what I'm saying that's the agenda. That's why we need salvation. We got to get the fuck up out this bitch, man. If um, I can say, a while back, I had read um, an article going into a lot of them chemicals you brother just was talking about was put in these cereals, like these different um, foods that Jake specifically eat. You know? Different shit like Kool-Aid and these, you know, all these little, little candies that Jake be eating. Now and later and shit like that. A lot of that shit is in there. Talking in Jake's, huh? Turning them into pillow biters. Car. Car. Hey, give you me Psalms 94 and 22. Con, I'm on it. The Psalms 94 and 22, it says, But the Lord is my defense, and my power is my rock of my refuge. All right. And all of these uh, devices that Esau. Brings on our people, man. We need we need protection from that shit, and, and the protection you need is in your mind because he's attacking your mind. He's not really attacking our people physically yet. He's going for your 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 thought patterns, your cognitive function, and the Lord defends us by giving us His Word, His Spirit. Okay, that's how that's how we're going to be stabilized when all is real hell, when all this real per persecution comes up. But right now, you're supposed to be fortifying your mind with this word so you don't uh, be beguiled by this uh, magician's tricks, okay? Because he, he, he's coming for our people in every which way. What the scriptures say, Satan is, is like a war in line going around seeking who he may devour, all right? Wow. And first and foremost, he want to come after the servants of the Lord. That's who he want to make fall. But, you know, you got brothers coming in at a great number now. You got brothers... Inquire another Lord. So you got to come in and get this thing uh, wise hot. <laughs> you got to get it wise, get it wise hot. That was that was the insider. But yeah, you got to get it, it wise. Here, but, hey, we don't have much time. The, the doors of the spiritual arc is closing, and all of these things we're talking about with the agenda, uh, with the banking systems, with these, uh, with these. Uh, these tranquilizers, we can't say the word, uh, with all of these diabolical diseases that they say is about to uh, come up on the people. All right, you got to have, yeah, man. God damn. Right I saw that. Yeah. I, I saw that yeah. shit. I remember seeing Tyrone. that. I remember seeing that. Yeah, Tyrone Hayes. That's a guy. Yeah. yeah. Tyrone Hayes, man. And they I, got I, a I remember seeing, he, he, he had a little clip where he was talking about it. Right? Yeah. Going into it, they, they try to kill him. They try to kill him and his family, man. And they'll do it. Whistleblowers in America got to do what that dude did and went to Russia. You got to have his shit together. If he want to blow a whistle, he better blow that whistle from another country. And then you better pick the right country because there comes that other country and get you. You know. So Yahweh Bashim Shai is going to defend his elect men from these things, from these uh these assaults from the devil. That's why he said you got to put on the helmet of salvation and the, the, the shield of faith so you can block these fiery darts that this devil's throwing at you, man. He, and he's coming at it. Uh, he's coming at our people full force like he never has. He got his ears pinned back. He got his great iron teeth out, and he's throwing the kitchen sink at our people. And what and, and the ones that he can't get uh, mentally. When he puts his squeeze on him, he, if he can't get you when he, he, he shuts down the banking system, he can't get you with his philosophies in the schools, all right, all of his devices, 
Then he's going to, that gray red dragon is going to come after the men of law physically. All right? And that's yeah, the that's time cool. we're living in. That goes into the, into the three phases of war, man. They come, they come action nicely first. Then in the second stage, they put a little pressure on you. Then the third stage, they just slaughter you, man. All right, they use the force of the sword to enforce what they want. All right, and they're gonna do it through through these troops, the guillotine, and there and other uh, ways to administer administrate pain to you, man. All right, in the worst way, they're gonna destroy you with all our prejudice, man. And they gave, on site. What you got? They gave you a they gave you a, a a small example of that, not just of what you were saying, the three phases, but also how they're gonna come with the karagma with the juice. First, they were they were asking nicely with it and giving out a tons of benefits, free donuts, free joints, everything. And then what they say, oh, you don't want to drink, then you can't come here. You don't want to you don't want to buy a six pack. You you can't you can't keep this job. They just didn't go to that last stage to where what they were putting your head in the guillotine, which is going to come with this karagma. Right. So they know what you people want, man. America is, is America is thrived on sex, money, and drugs. And you pick you pick your poison of what they're gonna do. To, they're gonna it's gonna get so bad for the for the karagma. They're gonna be giving out free crack, probably, man. Free pills, fentanyl, right? Free fentanyl, whatever you want. Just come down here and get the get the uh the karagma, man. The jump shot in you. And you people are gonna do what you always do. I just seen you down here. You bunch of fat asses, man. Running out getting getting donuts from Krispy Kreme. And taking the and taking the uh the, the big pokey man, right? You people are simple, you know. The people are simple. It, it's not hard. It's not hard. To, it's not hard to get you at all, man. Then you got family, dumbass family member. Hey man, you got you got your you got your, you got your, your, your jump shot. They don't ask me that shit. Oh, you must not get it. That's why you say shit like that. You know, they stupid, man. I got five of them. Nigga, nigga put the number five to you, too. I, I got five of them. They feel good about itself, man. Why they eating a bug protein sandwich? Meanwhile, the nigga bladder getting weak, man. He can't even hold, you can't even hold your bowels no more, man. He falling out and shit. You going half blind. You need them rhinos. Stupid, man. But you, gonna, you people going to learn the hard way, though, man. You going to learn the hard way when this devil really... You know, comes out of his bag. You're going to see them horns on his devil and them fangs. He's going to bring all our hell to you, man. All right? Because we didn't we didn't told you. We didn't been out on the highways and byways for for a long time now, man. Including the apostles for a very long time. And, and, he, and like I say, those who the Lord wants to wake up, all right, and, and, and follow him, they're going to do it. But the bulk of you is just going to, like I say, we didn't sit. Right now, I told another brother earlier today or something. Man, we in the we in the last phase of the of the elect. Really, the elect is already still. We in the last phase for the the last wave wave of brothers coming out, getting in the camp, getting down, and, and like I said, this is it, man. This this it. You can see it. The morale is going on the block. There's nobody nobody listening no more, man. Nobody's you know inquiring. And everybody going back into that stupor. So, like I said, this this has to be the end. See what you say? Okay. But you got it. I put that in. That's all I had, y'all. Well, you can shut it down then, brother. It's been it's been about a uh, uh it's been about an hour and eight eight minutes, man. All right, nobody have any more precepts? Anything you can bring it out, whatever I got. If not, you can shut it down, bro. All right, so with that, we're gonna get infinite honor start helping the father and our great king. Yahweh, the elder apostles of great millstone, the salutation to our fellow labors in the Mashiach, Yahweh shall put his truth across the four winds and his fine hour, making a call in elections and sure by abounding his labor love. Shalom to you, brother. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.